Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another Dynamics tutorial. This one is going to be in cloth and I will show you how to quickly create some really cool curtains. So we're going to go over end cloth, we're going to go over passive colliders and so much more. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need is our cloth. So I'm just going to use a regular rectangle and I'm going to, you know, elongate it and it really depends. Whoops, that's probably too long something like that and then lift I'm gonna go over here to my channel box and take a look at my uh, inputs um, when you're doing dynamics you need to make sure you have plenty of geometry because you're gonna start flexing it and bending it in a lot of various ways so the more geo the better and if you're interested in texturing it I would highly recommend that you UV map it right now I am going to go into planar mapping options and I am going to be choosing X apply so I know now that whatever material I put on this it's going to work. It's better to UV map this plane now before you bend it and fold it because then it's going to be a lot more complicated. All right now that I have this I'm going to go ahead and you know just center the pivot, delete the history, freeze the transformations and I'm also going to go into the VFX tab. So over here to the left under modeling there's a pull down menu go ahead and choose FX and over here we have end cloth. Let's go ahead and select our curtain and choose create end cloth. You're going to see that we now have an end cloth node. We also have a nucleus. I'm going to press play and see what happens. There it goes and it will go on forever. Oops, there it goes until I run out of time. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more time just because it's fun watching this thing fall. And I'm going to watch it as it starts folding and falling for eternity. Uh, then we can kind of take a look at it if we'd like. There it is. That's not really a curtain, but it's kind of neat to look at. Okay, so let's go ahead and create something that it's going to get attached to. So I'm going to go ahead and create a cylinder and I'm going to bring it up, stretch it out and scale it. I'm also going to increase this, uh, the height, subdivision height, because I need to have some vertices for my cloth to attach itself to. So just like anything else, I'm going to go ahead and center the pivot, delete the history, freeze the transformations, and we are ready to go. This is going to be my passive collider, and actually it would be a good idea to make sure that it intersects your mesh. So again, delete the history. This is going to be my passive collider. So I'm going to go to my end cloth and create a passive collider. So if you've seen my previous tutorials, I encourage you to watch those. Passive collider means is that the end cloth will react to it. So if I press play, you'll notice that it doesn't really act too much to it because it's not really doing anything. But if I had passive collider somewhere else, it would actually impact the cloth would impact it versus any other type of geometry. Again, I highly recommend that you watch my other videos, which I go over that in much deeper detail. All right, so now we're going to right click on our cloth, go to vertex. Let's go ahead and select those top vertices. You can't see them, but they're there. If I go to x-ray mode, you can see it. And then shift select the cylinder and then go to end constraint point to surface. So when I rewind and play, you can see that now my cloth is staying where it's at. Perfect. Stop rewind. Now I'm going to keyframe this so that it scales. So around frame 70, I'm going to hit S and then around frame 100, I'm going to go ahead and bring this in and then hit S. Now you're going to see something interesting. Here comes the dynamics. And voila, just let that settle in for a second, letting the dynamics run. And when you think it looks good, I can press stop. Now, if you didn't get the same effect, I recommend that you go to field solvers and I actually activated interactive playback. So that means that whatever happens, we can see it right off the bat. So again, rewind, let that cloth settle, and then you can watch it do its thing. Let that cloth settle some more. And very quickly, we have curtains. I'm going to press stop. I'm going to grab this and duplicate it. Control D. Move it aside going to rewind and this time I'm going to try to get a different type of shape so I'm going to maybe crush this a little bit faster and maybe not so long so let me rewind that and just make it a little longer hit s let it settle for a second and then it's going to do its thing and now I have a different shape for the curtain 
So again, very quickly, I can create some really nice curtains. Fun things just for the plus side, the Academic Phoenix Plus aspect of this is that uh, if you go to the nucleus and open up the attributes, we have wind speed. So right now the wind speed is zero. I can increase this and then the wind direction is on the X positive one. And you'll notice that it will do this. So I can get some nice wind speed and then we have some floating curtains or a cape. You can actually make this into a cape if you like. So there we go. If you wanted to have some flowing curtains, very quickly, you can actually do that. Let's have a little bit more fun. Let's assign a new material. I'm going to choose an AI standard surface. I'm going to go into my color, click on the little output, go to file, little folder. And I downloaded this lace. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Press the number six on your keyboard so you can see what it looks like. Way too big. Uh, over here on the right, let's go to our placement node and change our repeat UVs to 5.5. Five. So now we have that. I can go to 6.6 six, and now I have some lazy texture. Again, you want to make sure you UV map this before you create the dynamics because otherwise you may have some issues. Um, let's create a physical sky. I'm going to go ahead and render, see what it looks like right now. There it is. And I'm also going to change the opacity. So I'm going to go to my geometry. Here's my opacity. Click on this little guy again. Go to your file. Click on my lace. And I like to change this to raw. And I also like to change my alpha is luminance to on. And let's see what that looks like. So now we have this really interesting pattern. Now you can see that the lace is not really matching the pattern here and that's because I increased the division here by six. So I need to go back and change my placement UVs, repeat UVs to six as well. It has to match. And there you go. We have a nice little lacy thing. If you think it's too big or small, I think it's too small. Maybe I'll go back to three, three. But don't forget, if you wanted to keep repeating, you need to go into the color and change this placement node as well to 3.3. Three. So now it's a little bit more noticeable. So very quickly, we can create some lacy curtains. Of course, you're not limited to anything. You can change it to anything you want, but I just thought that was kind of fun because uh, it's a quick way of getting some really nice looking curtains. So there you go, everybody. Uh, you can create flowing curtains. Ooh, I'm going to assign it to all of them. Right click, assign existing material, um, AI standard surface, fancy stuff. Oof, super shiny. I'm going to go ahead and grab the lace. Let's find that AI standard surface. I'm going to increase the roughness a little bit. And just because I'm working on this now, I might as well just increase my sheen a little bit. So now we get a little bit of that soft edges. Let me render that again. It's thinking very hard. And there you go. You got some really nice looking lace curtains. I'm going to let that render till the end, but hopefully you guys found this helpful. We went over how to quickly create some nice looking curtains using end cloth. Um, and of course, a little bit of opacity and lace just to kind of add it to it. But hopefully you found it fun and helpful. Let me know what you guys think by leaving a comment below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. That always encourages me to make more videos. Also, feel free to share my videos with anyone that you think might find this helpful. There's always uh, someone out there that doesn't know how to create opacity or is curious about how to make lace um, or just cloth. So if you'd like to share this video, please do. And if you have the time, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. That is my website that you can download free tutorials, free videos, free eBooks, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time in another tutorial. Take care.